So I'd like to just discuss a typical, um, let's call it old style electromechanical distributor. Uh, first of all, we would understand that modern engines generally would have some sort of electronic ignition system. Um, this ignition system is not electronic. Well, I mean, it is, but it's electromechanical. Um, distribution of the spark to the appropriate spark plug is done via some little switches and cams. So let me just explain how the distributor works here. Um, first of all, we would note that the distributor really has two parts. It's got the interior part, which is this part that's now spinning. Um, and then it's the exterior part, which is a distributor cap. Um, so what's basically going to happen is at the appropriate time, um, the current is going to flow from the coil, which on this distributor is right here on top, um, out through the lead on the bottom, which is really in the center, and it's going to make a connection right here. And then on the other uh, you know, terminal right here, uh, that's going to make connection on to the appropriate uh, terminals that are connected to the ignition wire that's going to go to the appropriate spark plug. So of course, what you're going to see when you look at your distributor on your car is going to be something just like that. You're not going to see the internals, but they're certainly there. And then you're going to see you know, wires that go to eight or six or four cylinders. Now, what we need to do is make sure that when this, which is called the rotor, makes the connection between the coil and the ignition wire, um, that that's the same time that the high voltage current is being generated um, within the coil. So that happens through this little system that's right inside here. So basically, as the distributor rotates, um, what you might be able to notice is that there's a little switch right there. Okay, that's called the breaker points, or we just call it the points. And those points open and close under the influence of this cam. I mean, it just looks like a hex nut, but it's not. This is an actual eight lobe cam because this is a eight cylinder distributor. So with each rotation of the distributor, um, those breaker points are going to open uh, the same number of times as the number of cylinders you have. Again, this is an eight cylinder, so you have eight lobes on the cam and the points are going to open and close exactly eight times. Now what happens is this, is that when the breaker points closed, uh, current is actually going to flow into the coil um, from what's called the primary side, so that comes out of the battery. And as that current flows through, um, it's going to uh, you know, generate a magnetic field. And at the point where the rotor makes contact with the right ignition wire, you can see that's when the cam lobe is going to actually open up the points. So when you open up the points, the current from the battery stops flowing into the coil. Um, that causes the magnetic field to collapse. Now that collapsing magnetic field then induces a current within what's called the secondary side of the coil. Um, it's basically a big transformer of sorts. And on the secondary side, there are hundreds more windings than on the primary side. So that's going to then generate a current that's at a much higher voltage. So that high voltage um, on the order of thousands of volts is now going to go through the rotor, through the ignition wire on the distributor cap to the appropriate spark plug. And of course, the current's going to then cause a little spark on the gap to the spark plug, and that's going to ignite the fuel or mixture. So that's really all there is to a distributor. I mean, it might sound confusing, but it really isn't, right? It's just about timing. And then we would note that we do have to have the ability to adjust the timing based on different operating parameters. So for instance, the faster the engine goes, um, we're going to have to make sure that the spark fires earlier and earlier. Um, you always want to make sure that the spark has ignited the mixture such that the mixture burns and such that the combustion process occurs more or less at top dead center or maybe just a little bit before top dead center. So if the distributor is spinning really, really fast because the engine is spinning really, really fast, um, you need to make sure that the spark fires earlier um, to make sure that the combustion event finishes at about top dead center. So this distributor also has uh, what's called centrifugal advance. Now what we would notice is that right here, um, and it's really hard to tell, uh, but right here is actually some weights, okay? And as the distributor spins faster and faster, um, the weights are actually thrown outwards, and that actually causes this part of the distributor to rotate just a little bit 
um, causing the, well, the spark to fire a little bit earlier so that it hits the right spark plug a little bit earlier. And then also one would note that a typical engine uh, will have variations in the fuel to air mixture or variations in the fuel flow rate. And what we find is that the more fuel there is, uh, the faster the combustion process takes place. So what we need to do is we also need to adjust the timing for the fuel to air mixture. Um, so what we do is use what's called vacuum advance, right? So here we actually have a diaphragm and this diaphragm is hooked up to a vacuum tube. And now right here, this is just hooked up to a distributor tester, but this vacuum tube would actually be hooked up to the air intake system, right? Um, now when the engine is running at wide open throttle, um, the air intake system is more or less at atmospheric pressure. Um, that would always correspond to the maximum amount of fuel, fastest combustion, and you don't need to advance the spark at all. On the other hand, if you're running at partial throttle or at idle, um, then the intake system is going to be um, at a much lower pressure, you know, significantly below atmospheric pressure. Um, there's a, a big butterfly valve which is inside the carburetor and that's going to be mostly closed just to restrict the airflow when you don't need the airflow, right? You're at partial throttle or idle. Um, so that's going to create a vacuum within the intake system. And at these low pressures, these vacuum pressures, um, that vacuum is going to hook up to this diaphragm. Um, the diaphragm is going to move a lever, which is right in there, you know, right next to where these weights are. And it'll do essentially the same thing as the weights did on centrifugal advance. It's going to pull the distributor and the distributor is going to rotate ever so much slightly. Um, and that's again going to allow for the spike for the spark to ignite earlier. Now remember, you need to ignite the mixture earlier when you have a lesser fuel um, because it's going to take longer for the combustion process to complete itself. And, uh, you know, again, you want to make sure combustion ends at about near top dead center. Okay, so that's how a basic electromechanical distributor works. And now what I'd like to do is talk about the distributor tester experiment. So we'll, we'll do that in the next video.